chopping off the head. but the fog rolled in so we're kind of just deciding what we're gonna do I think we're just gonna sit here because we don't want to drive down there be too loud been a pretty good morning so far probably been out here hunting for two hours and we've seen a really nice sized cow and then we saw two these two bull moose one of them definitely isn't legal and then we just saw a second one and we can't tell if he is or not and then this fog rolled in so we might walk down there and or we might just keep up the trail and look for some other ones So we're going to be calling it quits today. We're actually going to head home a little early because it's just super foggy out here. We saw that cow earlier and we saw two bulls. We spotted one again. Eric spotted one again. But I just don't think with the rain coming in that we're going to see much else today. And if there's one thing we learned last season, it is that patience is <laughs> hard. But I think that's kind of key when you're moose hunting. So Eric and I are back out here hunting. Um, it's been a good morning so far. We got out here really early and spotted four cows that didn't appear to have calves with them. We pursued a few of them and some of them got spooked and one of them we really got really close to getting but she was right atop a hill and I just wasn't really comfortable shooting there. So we're glassing now and we've yet to see too much more. I think we saw one more cow this seems to be a really good area that we're hunting, so we are just gonna keep keep waiting it out, see if we can see anything, maybe pursue it if they are close enough to us. And it looks like the fog is coming in again. All right guys, you may be wondering why the tundra is on an ATV trail in the middle of a creek. That's because we're leaving today, we're done hunting for the day, we didn't get anything. And two miles from the truck, Polaris broke down on us. I don't know what happened, she just died in this creek. Checked a few things, couldn't figure it out. So I hiked back to the truck, unhooked the trailer, and I drove the truck up the trail. Now we gotta hook a strap to the players and see if we can tow Errol out of here. It's our fourth day hunting. We've got the players back up and running. And yesterday, nothing. Didn't see anything. And today, we we're seeing cows left and right. And we came upon a cow without a calf and took a shot. Had a good shot. She didn't quite go down as we planned. Um, so we're we're here, and she is she's on her on her way out. Um, and we're just waiting to go get up there to her. So I took the shot at about 150 yards. We were 
it was just a great placement, but I was a little uneasy about it. Um, we did, I shot her more than once. She's not breathing anymore. We're really close to her, so we're gonna head, head down there. scary she's she's gone beauty huh? that's a nice size cat okay. how, how old do you think she is three, three at least. the work has just begun this moose is down we shot her from way up on that ridge where the Polaris is um, the good thing is she's in a great spot she's on nice flat ground the grass is pretty short and I'm pretty sure we can drive our players right down to her. So that's the next step. We're gonna hike back up the hill and we're gonna drive the players down there because it's got all of our gear in it and we're gonna get to work. I just wanted to mention one thing because I don't think we have, I have a cow tag for this area. That is how we were able to harvest this cow and Eric has his tag for a bull. Yep. If we happen to see a eligible bull, pretty exciting. It's, <sighs> I don't even know what to say. I'm exhausted. Just the work is just starting to begin. This is awesome. We're going to have some meat this year. Okay, let's head back up. She's right. By that little green tree. There. I don't quit to know which way to go. You want me to go first so I can kind of look? I'm in pretty shallow there. Or it's not that steep. You sure? Yeah. Just give one back. I'll leave. Okay, I just hope that's not a ditch down there. It's way above my comfort zone. We made it down to the moose. We're getting out the proper equipment, get this thing processed. And I just brought pretty much every single one of our knives so we don't have to sharpen anything out here. We got a Victorinox, we got a Mora, we got a Benchmade, and then we have a custom one. Uh, I don't know what the brand is exactly off the top of my head, but this was made in Italy. It's an awesome skinny knife. One thing we are very cautious about is the bears around here, not too much the wolves. We did see wolf tracks yesterday, but we saw uh, grizzly bear tracks really close to here yesterday. So we're gonna load up the rifle again. We'll have the two side arms and we're just gonna be kind of keeping an eye while we get this thing processed. Luckily, it's about 8.30 in the morning, uh, maybe about 8.40 now, and it's a beautiful day today. There's just little flies out here, but no rain in the forecast. So this is gonna be awesome. <laughs> Heavier than a bag of feed. Perfect. The flies are sick. Let go open. That's great. And then if we also get that front arm. Actually, I don't even need that front arm open. Well, yeah, I do because. Remember all the, it's so high up you have to go? Yeah. Something went on there. Okay guys, we just got the spleen off of the stomach. This is the spleen. We've got the liver saved. Over here, I'm pretty sure this is a lot of fat. And our plan was, we have game bags, our plan was to skin things and get it all wrapped up. Change of plans because of how she went down. We're actually just going to be quartering her out, maybe even taking the whole carcass home and doing a lot of it at home because there's so many flies out here. It's kind of a warm day and we don't really want anything to get spoil or get too dirty out here. That's kind of our plan. We also didn't bring that much water with us. So we're kind of going to be in a hurry today. I'm really thankful that we've done this with the roadkill moose already. So we have somewhat of an idea how to um, approach it, but it is a messy job. With that moose in the back of the players, we're going to be a lot heavier, so it's probably going to be about an hour and a half on the trail to get to the truck, and then we got to get everything loaded up, 
and then we got about a 50 minute drive home. So hopefully within like three hours, we should, uh, once we have this thing loaded up, we should be home and be able to get it, should be home and be able to get it fully processed, get the skin off, get it cold, and then really start working on it. So Errol's over there, I gotta jump in and help her. Cool. We got the whole right side of the animal taken off, at least the front quarter and the hind quarter. We still got the rib cage. We're skinning that. We're gonna take back the whole rib cage. We like to get all the meat off of it. In fact, in Alaska, at least where we're at, you have to get all the meat off of it. So we're taking the whole thing with us. Um, we are going to now flip it over onto the other side. We're gonna roll the meat that we've skinned onto part of the skin that we've skinned off and then also this tarp so we don't get it as dirty. And then we're gonna get those two other hind quarters off. And then at that point, we should be able to try to get that carcass in the back of the player. So it's gonna be really heavy. We got the carcass, which is the rib cage, the back and the neck. So we're gonna flip this thing over. Wow. So far, minimal damage to the meat. Um, we found the one that dispatched her was in her head. She had one in her neck and then just one that barely grazed her, her belly. So thankfully nothing really bad there. And this is her heart. It's huge. We're gonna be putting that aside, saving all the organs for the dogs and some for us. So we kind of changed plans a little bit. We were thinking we were just gonna cut the back straps out and then we we're gonna lift the carcass in one piece up onto the Polaris. And uh, we just can't do it, it's way too heavy. There's no trees that we could like run a winch line up and pull it up. There's just a bunch of dead trees around us. So what we're gonna do is we're leaving the back straps and the tenderloin in the animal and we're gonna basically cut the animal in half um, through the ribs and then we're gonna ax the spine and we're gonna get into two sections. And I lifted up the back and I'm pretty sure we can lift each of those sections uh, separately. So yeah, we're getting pretty close to being done here. And Ariel's just getting out the last of the organs, and yeah, we're gonna continue chopping her in half. That's a bigger heart, I think, than that male had, isn't it? You remind me of that episode when Bear Grylls slept inside the camel? Well, you're really... Knife me. You cut my tarp. Wait, the tarp. That's what this tarp is for. That's so sad you're sacrificing it. I don't think I actually threw it. No, no, <laughs> but... Okay. So I think I found a kidney. We already had the pancreas. I'm sorry, we already have the spleen and I'm looking for the pancreas. I gotta go back to the stomach. I think this is a kidney, but it's just one. So we need to find the other one. It was buried in the fat. Nice little kidney bean. There you go. For breakfast. Is that why they call it a kidney bean? Because it looks like a kidney? I absolutely have no idea. It Makes be, sense it now. the other way around. Right, kidney retrieved. With beautiful fat on it. Oh my goodness me. Do you want to just throw this tarp on top? This would be a good one to throw on top. Sure. It's clean on half of it. Yeah, you did cut through half of it, so that's okay. We are getting close to being able to hit the trail. We brought a lot of stuff in. You need a lot of gear out here to get a moose and also get yourself unstuck, some stuff like this. So a lot of that was filling up the bed. So I'm just finding new spots to put all this stuff. But when we actually get back to the cabin and we get the moose unloaded and get it in the freezer, uh, I'm gonna kind of go over the players and some of our gear and just kind of what we've learned from last season um, about stuff that we need to bring out here moose hunting. It's pretty smooth trail, not that bad. Minus the whole way down. Yeah. We got the Polaris all loaded up. It took us from when we actually put a knife to that moose to right now, a little over two hours of work. So not too bad at all, but it's starting to get pretty hot out here today. I think it's gonna be close to 70. So we're gonna start hitting the trail back. Um, we drove down here and it's a pretty smooth trail. There's one little steep part to get up, up to the actual trail. So we'll see how we do. All right, we made it up the hill in the Polaris. I forgot the GoPro was on the dash and we lost the GoPro. So we're back down here, Errol just found it, thankfully. 
and we're, we're hiking up back to where the Polaris is. Would have lost the camera and the footage. <laughs> Sorry about that. So we're headed home for real now. stop real quick because I have something in my eyeball and I needed to wash my hands. The only one thing that we probably should have brought was more water. Um, we both realized we brought a little amount of water so that would be nice next time. Thankfully there's a stream and because we're in Alaska most of the time there's water nearby. So we still have a few more miles to go, quite a few actually, and it's probably going to take us at least another hour. We're going to go slower because of all that weight we have. So that's one of the muddiest sections we just went through and you could definitely tell the difference when you have all that moose meat in the back. I'm not sure how much weight we have. I'm guessing five or 600 pounds. The good thing about this trail, most of it's downhill. So going through the mud, it's usually a little better going downhill. There is one really steep downhill section that's really slick. We were actually sliding down it when we didn't have any weight in the back. But that's towards the end of the trail. So we'll see what happens when we get there. We've made it to the top of the mountain. We just climbed out of the valley where we got the moose. And this is the trail we're going down. We're just checking things over real quick on the players. This is probably the part I'm most worried about is the downhill because it's really steep and it's hard to go down with nothing in the back. We did bust the floor on our Polaris. I don't know if you can see that. Big rock came through and hit that. The stock skid plate that this comes with, it only protects like pretty much the center. I think it's like a, maybe about that wide, like a foot and a half wide. and. After last year, we scraped this thing so much, we wanted to order a skid plate for this. So earlier this season, I went online to try to order a skid plate for it. And the shipping of the skid plate was more than what the actual skid plate was. So it was gonna be like $1,500 to get a skid plate for this. So we didn't get one and now we're paying for it. So we're gonna have to do something. We're gonna have to build something or get something custom built. But here we go. We gotta get this moose out of here. The hardest part is over. We made it down to the bottom of the trail. This is actually where we broke down in the Polaris uh, the other day and we had to drop the tundra here to tow it out. It is two miles from here back to the truck and it should be a pretty easy ride. We gotta go through this river and a couple little tiny hills, but nothing bad. So I think we're pretty much in the clear. made down the hill, we're loaded up and we're heading home.
We made it home. We're gonna get this meat cleaned up, get the rest of the skin off of the four quarters. I think we left a little bit of the skin on there. And then um, we're gonna get it in the freezer and just unplug the freezer just to keep this meat cool until tomorrow. So we still got a little work to do today. That's, that's heavy. Don't think I broke my Okay. Yes. <laughs> Now that we got the moose taken care of and it is in the coolers, we have a rainstorm coming in pretty soon, so I need to get the Polaris unloaded. So a few of the heavier items that we bring is going to be our spare tire, which since we had to put the moose in the back, went up on the roof, and we always bring two gallons of gas. And then I believe this Polaris holds about nine gallons. So we've never ran too low on fuel. We've only had to use that gas can one time. And then we always bring a high lift, and this is, or it's called a farm jack. These things come in extremely handy. We use this all the time. We bring a shovel. This is a shooting stick just to kind of uh, use to steady your rifle. We bring an ax. This comes in handy for processing a moose or if you need to cut down a tree to get unstuck. And then this is something new to us that we actually just bought. And this is called a land anchor. When you get up high into the mountains, a lot of the time there is nothing to hook a winch to if you get stuck. And we've been in some pretty bad situations. So we decided to buy this. And this basically sits like that on the ground. You hook your winch here and you have, you know, you try to put some pressure on this, have someone stand on it. And as you winch, these dig down into the ground and hence the name, this is a land anchor. And then it's actually folds up like this for storage. Last thing we have is two big blocks of wood. A few weeks ago, we were up in the mountains behind here and we got stuck in the mud and we were using the high lift to get out because there was nothing to winch to and we had nothing to put under the tires. So it took us about an hour to get out. So now I keep these blocks of wood in the back of the players with us. Last year, we didn't have legitimate gun racks in this thing and I just kind of had them strapped to the ceiling of the players, which worked but it was really dusty last year. And every time we went to grab a rifle, we had to clean them off before we wanted to shoot them. So we invested in these gun boots. We really like them. They're in these hard shells and there's a padding in there and they keep them out of the weather. So this side was my rifle and this is a Marlin, it's a 4570. And over on this side, this is a rifle arrow was shooting and this is a Remington 700 and this is a 270. Now that we're done with the back, let's just kind of go over the actual machine itself and tell you what we use. This is a 2014 Polaris Ranger 6x6 and it has a 800 motor. We bought this thing used because they actually don't make these anymore. I believe they stopped making them in 2016, but this has been a great machine for us. We used it all hunting season last year. We put close to a thousand miles on it last year. One of the main advantages of this machine is you have two extra tires. So when you put this thing in full six wheel drive, every single one of these tires will be spinning. Another thing that's awesome about these is you get a huge bed and you get this huge toolbox. This thing right here pretty much hauls every single thing that we bring out there. Something we decided to bring this year was all of our rain gear. So those are my rain pants. In here is all of the tools that we bring. Um, air compressor, wrenches, spark plugs, electrical gear, um, tire repair kit, all that's in here. This is Ariel's sidearm. That's a 357 Magnum. This is another piece of recovery gear if we need to winch backwards or to the side. This is a come along. Whenever we go out, if we see trash on the ground, we try to pick it up. So that's what that is. Binoculars. This is a tripod for our GoPro. We have our fire extinguisher, bunch of bungees, some rope, a nice big D-ring. And what I use that D-ring for is this, which is a snatch block. And basically what this does is we can use this on another anchor point and we can double the strength of our winch. We bought a bunch of rags, which was awesome to have this hunting season. This is kind of like our bug out bag or survival bag. We did a video on this in the past, so I'm not gonna completely break it down, but it's got pretty much everything we need from first aid, fire starting, fishing, shelter, um, water purification, all kinds of good stuff in there. 
The only real storage we have in here is the glove box and underneath the seat. And underneath the seat, we have a couple straps. This one's a 30 foot long strap, and then we have a 15 foot long strap. Out front, there's nothing too special. We did add a light bar, which is awesome to have. And we have a 4,500 pound winch. And then the cool thing about this Ranger is it has some front storage. So we have an extra belt and some extra fluids in there. Over on the passenger side, which is where Errol sits, we just have our hunting jackets sitting here, which are also, you know, our rain jackets. And then we have the glove box, which we put a ton of stuff in. We have more rags. We have all of our hunting licenses and Ariel's um, draw tag. We have our gloves in here. Ariel set of binoculars, her earplugs. We carry a ton of flashlights with us. I think we have three or four different ones just in here. And then one thing we always bring with us is our GPS and then the charger so we can actually hook it up to the Polaris and charge it. And as far as the cab goes on the Polaris, this has the glass front, then it has the plastic back, and then it has the metal roof. And we really like the metal roof because it's strong enough that we can actually both stand up there and we can glass for moose. And on this side of the toolbox, this is where we kept a lot of our camera gear. So we bring our GoPro and we bring our main camera, which is Ariel's photography camera. And then we brought our tripod, but we also have our moose call in here. We have some game bags that we didn't use this season. This is where we kept our water ball and all our food, which I already unloaded. And then this is where I had our ammo, which I already unloaded. Overall, this machine did awesome this year. Last year, I think we really beat on this machine. Uh, we snapped a couple axles, we blew out a few tires. This year, we busted the hole in the floor, which, you know, it happens. We don't have a full skid plate on it. And we broke down that one day and I had to drive the Tundra in and pull it out. Actually, all that happened that day was a wire came unplugged that went to, I believe it's the coil. And I couldn't see it. I didn't find it until we got home. So overall, we really love this machine. But we have a bunch of stuff I got to get put away. So I'm going to get to it. The Polaris is all cleaned up and ready for our next adventure. We were not as lucky last year and I think we're both glad that this season is over and, and done with and we were fortunate. And we both really enjoy going out there and hunting. It's a great experience. But there's also the element of uncertainty which makes hunting pretty discouraging. So I know that we just try to remind ourselves to be grateful that we're in the position we're in and we were able to go out there and get a moose. That being said, we ran out of moose meat a while ago and we want to eat some more. So we're going to get in there. We're going to start processing this thing and that's what you're going to see in the next video is us getting that moose all processed and in the freezer. What's up with it? I don't know. Is it super tight? It's super tight. 